years ago, in 1995, there was an event that happened in my office that I still remember as if it was yesterday. There was a woman that called my office and she was crying violently. My secretary cleared my calendar and told her to come right over. And she went into my office, she sat on my sofa, and continued to cry, ever increasing in volume. She was so distraught that there was no way that I could calm her. For a half an hour she cried, for a half an hour she told me what had happened. As she told me what had happened, it didn't seem that serious to me, but in her mind it was. In her mind it was huge. It had taken over her life. After a half an hour, maybe more, she had to calm down, and wipe her eyes, and, and I just touched the top of her hand and I said, tell me, when this happened? The answer I expected was about a half an hour ago, uh, this morning, yesterday evening. The answer she gave was an answer that riveted me then and still does today. She said, it happened to me in 1957. In 1957, something happened to this woman, and she became a victim. She never got over this, this event. She thought about it daily, and daily as she thought about it, it became bigger and bigger and bigger inside of her own mind, to a point that she was frozen. She could not move forward. She only lived to tell her story. Now imagine if you were going to court tomorrow and you had done something and the judge stood up in front of you and he maneuvered his gavel and he struck it and he said, you're sentenced to 38 years in prison. You would be devastated. You would say, my life is over. And, and it would be, or a great deal of it. Well, this woman had worse. Her prison was self-imposed. She was the jailer. And she had locked the door. And she had determined in 1957, then 38 years old, that she would never come out again. She would never live. What a shame. The past is past. Even yesterday is past. My friends, you are not your biography. As good or as bad as that was, you are not your biography. You are not just flesh and bone either. You are made of a spiritual fiber that is made up of God courage, that is made up as a being that is co-created to keep on keeping on, to keep on living. You are a spirit, you're a child of God. And therefore, as a child of God, you do God's will and you do not allow the past to imprison you. Not a little bit, not a lot. Let me give you an example. A stone may have been lying at the bottom of a riverbed for 10 million years. But if you pluck out that stone and set it in the sun for five minutes, it is completely dry. Now, we take a dry stone from the bank, 
and we place that in the water for two seconds and put it down to dry again. And then a moment later, you will not be able to tell the difference between the two stones. The one that has been wet for millions of years is just as dry now as the stone that was only wet for a few seconds. Well, what is my point? Your future does not reflect your past unless you will it to. No matter how long you have been telling your story and living stuck in the bondage of the status quo, once you set the intention to make a shift to a new level of living, the quality of your life can change forever. God is waiting for every one of us, waiting to get us to the next level of life. A life that is newly formed has exactly the same dynamic energy as someone that has been living in that life for decades. The moment that you start expressing your newfound life, you bring new life to everyone and to everything that you touch. To coin an old phrase, you can hold a candle to anyone. It says in the Bible, let your light shine. It will illumine your way out of the dark hole of your problems. The first rule about holes, if you're in one, stop digging. <laughs> we have tried to do things alone too many times, and it has not worked. What we need is spiritual guts. Spiritual G-U-T-S. It stands for going up to spirit instead of looking down at our problems. Freedom is about learning to live our Christianity, to make it real in our day-to-day -day living from morning until night. We can't really know the fullness of freedom until we make the decision and choose to commit to live in the Jesus Christ way. Make that commitment. Start moving on your own spiritual path. Begin to make your conscious choices. That's what life is about. It's not ever about being a victim and not allowing outside pressures to break us down or to cave in on us. It is about living in the moment and making conscious choices that allow us to change. In that change, we begin to know that there is only one presence and one power in our life and in all the world, and that is God the good. Helen Keller said, It is mostly superstition. Security does not exist in nature, nor did the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger, she said, is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either an exciting adventure or nothing. Now we might say, I want an exciting adventure, forgetting for a moment that an exciting adventure is not always comfortable. When we trust in God, we make it bearable. We want our lives to be an exciting adventure. We do not want to relive yesterday especially the bad memories over and over and over again into our tomorrows. We want to be an expression 
of the creation of God. One woman told me this story. She said, it reminded me of a time when my son was taking skydiving lessons. He came into the office. He was so excited about it. He was going the next morning and he started explaining what he was going to do and how he was going to do it when he jumped out of this airplane. She said, I could hear the fear in his voice. And yet, it was about feeling the fear with faith in God and doing it anyway. That is an exciting picture. We do have a choice. We can choose to try to stay in a very safe place. Yet trying to avoid danger is no safer than outright exposure, as Helen Keller said. It is about courage, and God will give us great courage. It's also about giving up the idea that something bad is going to happen. We go along in this life often thinking that if we do this or that, something bad is going to happen. It's the Murphy Law spirituality. We need to give up the idea that something bad is going to happen. Or we start looking for consistency and comfort based on fear. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this. He said, consistency is the stuff of little minds. It is really about living in the past, he said. If we're trying to be consistent, we are looking back to the past to try to grab on and hold on to that. But the past is nothing more than history. We are trying to duplicate that history. And when we do, we're not participating in the exciting adventure called the present. In this exciting adventure of life, it is time to make choices. And to make that choice to experience the courage, the love, and sometimes the discomfort, if that is what it takes to really participate in the adventure called life. Make the commitment. Even though your knees may be shaking. God, instead of fear, will take over as you move forward through the doorway of spirituality into new life. It is all about intent. Arnold Patton says this. He says everything in life is about intent. We need to have a clear intent to have our life work out perfectly. Here are the four steps for setting an intention in prayer. Number one, get clear about something you want and write it down. Number two, share your intention with someone in a way that they will supportively hold you accountable for taking action. Number three, do something today to demonstrate your commitment to your intention. Number four, acknowledge that you did what you said you would and then take the next step as directed by God. Oh, God will always give you the next step if you're willing to move out of the past. Let me tell you a story. There was a great man. 
He was a fighter for freedom, and he was traveling in the mountains. He stayed the night in a monastery, and he was amazed that in this monastery there was the most beautiful parrot in a golden cage. The parrot was continually repeating over and over again, freedom, 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 freedom. From the morning till the night, from inside the bars of the cage, freedom. And it was such a place that when the parrot repeated the word freedom, it would echo in the valleys and in the mountains. Well, the man thought, I have seen many parrots, and I have thought that they must want to be free from their cages. But I have never seen such a parrot whose whole day from morning till evening when he goes to sleep is spent in calling out freedom. He had an idea. In the middle of the night when the owner was fast asleep, he got up and he opened the door of the cage and he whispered to the parrot, Now, get out. He was very, very surprised when the parrot was clinging to the bars of the cage. He said to him again and again, Have you forgotten about freedom? Just get out. The door is open. The owner is fast asleep. No one will ever know. Just fly into the sky and the whole sky will be yours. But the parrot was clinging so deeply, so hard, that the man said, what, What's the matter? Are you mad? He tried to make the parrot get out with his own hands, but the parrot started to peck him. And at the same time, he was shouting, freedom, freedom. The valleys in the night echoed and re-echoed. But the man was a freedom fighter, and he was stubborn. He pulled the parrot out. He threw the parrot into the sky And he was very satisfied. Although his hand was badly hurt, the parrot had attacked him so forcefully that the man was quite hurt, could hardly bend his hand. But he was immensely satisfied that he had made a soul free, and he went to sleep. In the morning he woke up feeling good about what he had done. And as the man was waking up, he heard the parrot shouting, freedom, freedom. And he thought to himself, he said, perhaps the parrot is sitting on a tree or on a rock free. But when he came out, the parrot was sitting in the back of the cage and the door was open. People prefer a known hell to an unknown heaven. And they will defend their hell rather than to move into an unknown heaven. Fear and courage are brothers. Courage is the power to let go of the familiar and move forward with God. When you're praying to God in secret, you are asking God to change your life and allow your life to work. And you'll notice that I said, allow. You have free will. You can stay in that cage. You can be a self-imposed prisoner if you choose, like the lady that I told the story of. My friends... Every day, you either see a scar or courage. Where you dwell will define your struggle. Optimism, I believe, is the foundation of courage. Spiritual freedom opens the door to the cages of your past. God's help moves you into bright tomorrows.